String instruments are basically made out of a hollow box, four strings, and a bow. That's it. Ah, but we know it's so much more. The three basic pieces of wood or types of wood that are used specifically for their qualities and characteristics are maple, a hardwood, spruce, a soft wood, and ebony, which is a very hard dark wood. That's what you see um, on the fingerboard and the pegs, and we'll talk about that more. Yeah, so three different kinds of pieces of wood, but there are over 70 pieces that go into making a string instrument. Let's start at the very top. We start with our scroll. The scroll is carved out of maple, and it is often considered the signature of the maker. Even though most scrolls look very similar, each one has unique characteristics specifically designed by the maker. The wooden pegs that you see here are the are made out of ebony and the strings are wrapped around those pegs. See how that works? They're literally wedged into the peg box. The strings come over the top here. This is called the nut, also made out of ebony. The fingerboard, where we put our fingers to stop the the strings from vibrating for a variety of different pitches, also made of ebony. The neck is attached, the fingerboard is attached to the neck, which is attached to the body. And the body, of course, hollow box, but so much more. The top of the instrument is made out of spruce, which is a soft wood and used because it's much more resonant than maple or ebony for that matter. The sides and the back are made out of maple. So there's a picture of the side with a beautiful flame. And here's the back. Just beautiful. The harder maple provides more support for the box and for the, for the strength of the box itself, but also allows the sound to be projected out through the sound holes. Did you see the sound holes? Yeah, those two holes carved in the top, sometimes called F holes, but they're literally allowing the sound to be released freely from the box as it's vibrating. The strings come down. That's my mute. The strings come down over the bridge. The bridge is also made of spruce for its resonance. The bridge is not glued on. It is simply held in place by the pressure of the strings. The strings come down and are attached to the tailpiece, originally often made of ebony or another strong wood, like rosewood for instance, but nowadays very often they're made out of a metal, of some kind of metal alloy. That comes all the way down here over the saddle, right here at the base. This is an extra piece of strong ebony to support the tension that's coming across the edge of the cello there. And that the tailpiece then is wrapped around the button, or in this case, the tailpiece for the cello. And the end pin, there's a hole there, and the end pin slides right in to the base of the cello, just like that. Very, very small detail on the edge of the cello is called the purfling. This is an inlaid piece, three pieces, two pieces of ebony and a piece of, I believe it's a piece of maple between. This is specifically designed not only for a decorative purpose, but also to prevent injuries to the edge of the instrument from traveling to the table or the top of the instrument. So this keeps the integrity and strength of the top from being, um, from being affected by little bumps and scratches and, and edge damage as is common over time with the instrument. Hmm. There are over 70 pieces to the cello. We've gone through less than 20. I wonder where the rest are. Well, of course, they're inside. A little difficult with my iPhone to show you the inside of the cello, but I'm gonna do my best. If we peer in, the sound hole, you can see the shadow on the back side. Well, there is also a stick, a sound post. You can see the shadow of it there. 
and that goes from just behind the foot of the bridge on the high side to the back of the cello. And again, this is wedged in place very carefully and very precisely. It is not glued in place. This supports the top and allows the sound vibrations to travel from the top of the instrument to the back of the instrument and gets the whole inside vibrating to come back out through the sound holes. Along the bass side, so this is the bass side of the instrument with the lowest string and just underneath the top, glued to the top, is a bass bar and it runs nearly the full length of the top of the instrument. It supports that side from the tremendous pressure that's on the top, but it also enhances the resonance of the bass strings. A very, very important component to the tonal quality of our modern instruments in particular. All the rest of the pieces are blocks here at the top where the neck joins the body and at the bottom where this tremendous amount of pressure of the tension from the strings is pulling. So there's a big block down here to support that. And then lots of cleats to hold all the seams together and strips of wood along all the edges which allow for a larger gluing surface and supports the connection of the side to the top and the sides to the back. Well, in a nutshell, that's the anatomy of the cello. In another video, maybe we can talk a little bit more about the bow, but very quickly, typically made out of Pernambuco with horse hair, literally horse hair, from a horse's tail, and a little bit of ebony at the frog. This is a particularly beautiful example of a sobel bow from Casey Strings with really beautiful designs on the screw and at the base of the frog. Very pretty and a beautiful, wonderful bow to play with. There we are, a little bit about the anatomy of the cello.